Hello students, welcome to Accounting 1329, Payroll and Business Tax Accounting. This is Dr. Mercado speaking, and in this lecture we are going to begin covering Chapter 2, which deals with computing wages and salaries, okay? And the textbook that we are using in this class is the Payroll Accounting 2023 edition from Big and Toland. Okay, so now I am going to be going over, I've selected a couple of problems that I'm going to cover related to uh, chapter 2A problems, okay? Like I stated in our prior lecture from chapter 1, we cover our chapters for two weeks. So I've, I went ahead and I split the problems um, into the two separate weeks, that way we can have enough practice uh, to be able to master these skills. Now it is critical that we learn um, the material in chapter two because we are going to be using what we learn in chapter two in future chapters. So in this course, um, each chapter builds upon each other. Okay. So in chapter two, we're going to apply some of those laws that we learned from chapter one into the actual calculation calculation of wages and salaries. So we must have uh, read chapter one so we can be familiar with what we're doing in chapter two. Okay. So. Um, before we start, just uh, general announcements to please make sure that you read, you review your PowerPoints, you review any lectures in Blackboard. Before you begin working on your assignments, please make sure that you print out your syllabus and know exactly what is due and when. All of that information is in your syllabus as well as your weekly module in Blackboard. Okay. If you have any questions, please make sure to get with me Monday through Friday. That way I can better assist you. Okay, so let's get started with the first problem that we're going to cover in this lecture, and that is problem 28A. Okay, so I went over your homework and I selected some of the problems that don't have videos. Okay, I'm not going to go through all of the problems. I've just selected a few that I'm gonna, that I felt were important. Um, well, all of them are important, but I felt that these really needed some clarification because more than likely you're going to see some of these concepts in your upcoming exam. Okay, so I want to make sure that we master those concepts, okay? I'm not going to give you just busy work. If I'm assigning these problems, it's because we need to learn how to calculate the specific task at hand, okay? So the first problem that we're going to cover is problem 28A, and you are going to have problems similar to these on your homework. Not identical, because I'm going over them, something similar, okay? So in this example, we have Joseph Cavato is paid $12.96 per hour. During the past week, he worked 46 hours, and he is a covered employee who must be paid overtime. Okay. Uh, remember, if you go back to the chapter, there are some employees that are not paid overtime depending on the type of pay structure that they're in. Okay. But this employee does qualify for overtime pay. So we have to calculate his gross pay using the overtime premium approach. Okay. Remember, gross pay is what he earns. This is the money that he is not going to take home. This is the money that he earned before any deductions. So from his gross pay, after that, we have to deduct all of the different applicable taxes that we're going to be learning throughout the rest of the chapters. Um, but this is just the amount that he earned. Okay. So he worked 46 hours. Um, so the first thing that we have to calculate is the regular pay. Then we have to calculate the overtime premium pay and then the gross pay, okay? So calculating overtime pay, there's basically two methods of calculating overtime pay. We have the most common method, which is basically any hours over 40 hours. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna overtime, um, we're gonna overtime, I'm sorry. We're gonna go ahead and multiply the hourly pay times one and a half, and that is gonna give us our um, overtime rate. And then we basically multiply that overtime rate by any a number of hours over our 40 hours. That is the most common method that is used, okay? Um, it's basically paying one and a half times over uh, your rate over any hours over 40, okay? Then we have the overtime premium approach, which is what we're applying in this problem, okay? So um, in the overtime premium approach, uh, what we do is we get the total hours worked, including any overtime hours, and we multiply that by the regular rate. Okay, and then we calculate the overtime, the overtime premium rate by multiplying the overtime rate times half, the regular uh, times half, to calculate the one half of the regular hourly rate, which is where we're going to multiply that rate by the number of overtime hours. Okay, regardless of the method that we use, uh, both methods are going to yield us the same answers. Okay. 
So let's apply the overtime premium approach, okay? So the first thing when we're calculating the uh, overtime premium, uh, our approach using, uh, let me rephrase that. Anytime we are use, uh, calculating our gross pay using the overtime premium approach, we begin by calculating the regular pay, okay? So the regular pay, like stated in your book, okay, we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna get the total hours worked. So we worked 46 hours and we're gonna multiply by the regular rate of pay. So I'm just following the instructions provided in your book, okay? So it tells us here that we're gonna get the total hours worked multiplied by the regular rate of pay, okay? So let me get my calculator. We've got 46 hours times 12.96. That's gonna give me 596.16, okay? And then I'm gonna calculate my overtime premium pay. Now, it says here to calculate the overtime premium pay, okay? Um, we are gonna calculate by multiplying the overtime hours, okay? So we have to figure out how many hours do we have overtime? Well, our overtime is any hours worked over 40. So we have six hours of overtime, because we have 46 hours minus the 40 regular hours. That means we have six hours of overtime. And then we're gonna multiply by one half of the regular hourly rate, okay? So to calculate that, we get the hourly rate of 12.96, and we're gonna multiply it by half and that's gonna give me an hourly rate of $6.48, okay? So that is my overtime premium pay, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get the 648 times six hours. That gives me $38.88, okay? And then we can simply add my regular pay plus my overtime premium pay, and that will give us our gross pay, 596.16 plus 38.88. That will give me 635.04. So that is my gross pay, okay? So it's just a matter of how you calculate the overtime using the overtime premium approach. First, we multiply the entire number of hours worked times the regular rate. Then we can calculate any hours over 40 times half our regular rate, okay, half. Okay, so half of 1296 is 648. We get the 648 times any hours over 40. That gives me 3888. And then I just simply add my regular and my overtime pay to give me my gross pay, okay? So if we were calculating this using the regular overtime pay calculation, what will we get? We should get the same thing, okay? So. If we were to do that, let me, this is not in the problem, but I just want you to see it, okay? Um, this is using the uh, regular overtime calculation. Just so you can see as a comparison what would happen, okay? So on my regular pay, what I would do is I would multiply my 40 hours times my 1296, okay? So 40 times 1296, that will give me 518.40, okay? My overtime pay would be any hours over, and let me just put here hours, that way we don't get confused, 40 hours, okay? We would get any hours over 40 and multiply it by one and a half times my regular rate, okay? So how many hours do we have overtime? We have six hours of overtime and I would multiply it by one and a half times. So my rate is 12.96%. I'm gonna multiply it by 1.5, one and a half times. And that would give me my overtime rate of 1944, okay? This is what most businesses use, okay, to calculate overtime, okay? So we have six times 1944, that'll give me $116.64. And then my gross pay would be the sum of those two. So I would get, okay, I would get my 518.40 plus my 116.64, and that would give me 635.04, which is the same amount that we got up here, okay? 
So regardless of the method that you use, is um, the overtime, the gross pay is going to come out to the same amount, 635.04. It's just that under the um, premium approach, my regular pay is 596.16 which is higher than if I do my regular overtime calculation of 518.40, yet my overtime pay is lower than if I use my regular uh, calculation down here, okay? So it's just a matter of um, which method that the company selects to use, okay? So these are the two options that we have. The top one is the overtime premium approach, okay? Um, so these are the two ways that we calculate overtime. The problem is focused on the overtime premium. Okay, there's information on your book about the overtime premium that you need to uh, go back and read over. Um, why is it that some companies choose to use the overtime premium? That is provided in your book, okay? But these are the calculations. Please be very careful um, when you enter the information in your calculator. That way you don't make any mistakes, okay? But that is it for problem 28A. Until next time, have a wonderful day.